Oh, I love it. I love it. It's a good cast. No, watch. He's on it. You got it. You got him. You got him. Yes. Oh, nice fish, Greg. Nice fish. Look at that. Hey, welcome to Hooked on Utah. Today we've got a killer adventure. You know, take a look at this good looking handsome crew. We're up in the mountains of Manti. We're gonna take you to some killer ponds, lakes, and show you how to catch some crazy fish. So sit back, relax, and enjoy tonight's adventure. took it right here by the log in this beautiful little brook trout. There were about five of them sitting under this log. And Brad said, well, let's just see what we get. And first cast right off the log. And look at that beautiful brook trout. On these ponds up here, we're fishing in a lot of deadfall. And so basically, if you're not losing a jig, you're not fishing right, okay? You need to go right in the, right in the deep stuff and, uh, and work the logs. And the fish, especially in this time of year in the heat, they want to lay under those logs for shade. So you're going to be working over the logs, and you're going to end up with snags. We're running an 18, or excuse me, a 16th ounce marabou jig. And the reason for that is, number one, it acts like what the fish want to eat. Also, it's light because you're working in shallow water. So you want something that's going to, going to stay in the water column above that moss and stuff. Atta boy. Oh, I lost him. Hey, I like it. Oh, catch and release. Casting the logs. So, you know, Brad's technique here, is we've got bright blue skies, a lot of sun out, and uh, the fish are hide hiding under these logs. And uh, so one of the things we're doing, casting jigs out, and the fish are coming from a distance to come running out and grab that jig. So we'll ambush. see. Yep, they're, they're just ambushing whatever's coming by. I'm over it. There you go. Oh. <laughs> oh, all right. There we go. There you go. Okay. Rookie on, baby. Hey, here's my first high mountain brookie with Brad. Oh, he's under the log. Come back out this way. Look at that. Take a look at this gorgeous little brook. Bam, take a look at that. Now that is a gorgeous high mountain brookie. Look at the colors. How beautiful. Look at that gorgeous fish. We'll put him back a little smaller than we're looking for. Look at the colors. Oh, he's in. He's gone. Bam, brook number one with Brad Bradley, the man. How awesome. Hey, shoot it down there, Brad. I know there's a couple more sitting there, so let's see if we can get another one. Okay, this is really dangerous here. <laughs> we're going to... You just kind of have, this is, like I say, it's more like hunting fish than fishing for fish. So you need to look for good places you can line out on. Oh, got him. Right here, right off the logs. Kamikaze in. Oh, I love it. Ho, 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 check that out. Look at that beautiful brook. Oh, you got to love it. Look at that guy. Here, let's see if we can get him up. Get him. Settle down, we're gonna put you back. <laughs> okay, here comes a big fish. Oh, perfect, I'm over the hole. That's right where he was. Oh, he missed it. He just slammed it. Okay. I just saw him show himself. Here he comes. Boom, fish on. Uh oh, stand on the log. Oh, come on. I don't want to have to go out there. There we go, over the log. Bam, look at this. 
There's another awesomely awesome cool brook. This is so cool. Up here, high mountain ponds. We came off the Arapine Trail and uh, just hit one of these local ponds that's up here. And we are jacking some beautiful brooks. Look at that beautiful brook. Gorgeous, look at the colors. We're gonna put him back, just reach over the edge. <laughs> under the log, under the log he went. Hey, Brad is on. Oh, look at that, Brad, that's a gorgeous one. We're just working off the side of that log right there. As the logs go out in the lake, pick a log that is 90 degrees to the, <laughs> come on, fella, if you wanna go back and swim again, you gotta cooperate. There you go. Oh, I shouldn't have thrown him. See all those take off out from under there? Um, what you wanna do is find logs that run 90 degrees to the bank, running straight out, and then fish the side of those logs. If you're gonna fish a log that is, is horizontal to you and not, and not parallel. When you fish those horizontals, you've got to go, you've got to go over the log and then you've got to walk the jig back and you have to have enough acceleration on it that when the jig hits the log, it's gonna go over it head first. If you let the jig drag over the log, it's gonna, the hook's gonna fall down and it's gonna snag in the log and then you're gonna leave hardware out there. And I have an entire tackle store out there from fishing here in the past. So if you don't leave it, leave a few jigs out there, you're not fishing it right. He's hooked up. Oh, get out from underneath that log. Sure. That's part of the battle too, is you're trying to get them up and over these logs. Look at this male, that guy's, oh, and he's off. Look at this fish right here. Pick him up. Look at the colors on that guy. So like Brad was just saying, it's a little scary going over the logs, Brad. You start losing your hardware, but look how beautiful that fish is. That's a gorgeous fish. My gosh. You know what? Some people are big fish hunters. Some, you know, they don't care. But for me, catching a, catching a, a beautiful brook like that is worth it any time of the day. Now, Brad, there's a big brook sitting right there in the open by that log hitting. You see him? Oh, Steve-O's on. We're busy over here. Steve-O is oh, on. Long line release. Here it comes. Bam! That's our guy. That is our guy right there. Oh, look at this. Look at the colors. Look at the colors. That's a male. Oh my gosh, look at that. So beautiful. He's got a bit of a kite going on. That's a beautiful holdover fish. Just let him shake a little bit. There we go, fish on. Come on. Off, off that log. Just a little right. one. Yep. Just, just a little one. You know, I had to switch lures and I didn't bring my reading glasses. So I tied on this little super duper because it was the only one I could find to put the line through, as blind as I am. But second cast, this little one shows up and uh, we'll try and extricate him. But there he is. Yep, and there's the release. Perfect. Just what we look for. And we'll send him back to grow. What a great pond. Every cast. Every cast. All the gear used on this week's adventure can be found at your local Sportsman's Warehouse or online at sportsmanswarehouse.com. I'd like to walk you through the gear that we used on today's high mountain adventure right down here on the Arapine Trail. What I want to show you are some baits that will absolutely work on any of these ponds or lakes. They're some of the classics. They'll also work in the boulders, the Uinas. Um, so you want to load up on these when you go to uh, uh, Sportsman's Warehouse. You know, you can't go wrong if you've got some of these spoons. You know, the Daredevil spoon, it's a classic red, yellow, black. They'll produce fish. You know, a Jake's is an absolute killer on the rainbow trout and the brooks in any of these high mountain lakes. You know, I've really become a fan of these buoyant spoons. You control them, cast them, and they produce violent strikes and catch fish in all types of waters. You have to have a good selection of spinners, and I love the Panther Martin. They've got them in all colors, but I love the brights, uh, bright reds, greens, and also the blacks will produce. The classic Castmaster 
If you don't have a couple of these in your box, you're missing out. They'll always, always catch your fish. Now today we had a lot of success because of Brad's knowledge on catching these high mountain brookies. We used black and brown 16th ounce marabou jigs. You want to stay on the lighter side. Casting is a little more difficult, but they'll drop nice and slow down into that dark colored water and that produces violent strikes. Now I'm also a huge fan of fluorocarbon line. These lakes are clear water. These fish are flighty and a little bit uh, sensitive to movement. So you want to use a good fluorocarbon that disappears in the water. And you know what? Today we're casting over logs and sticks, so you want to at least something in that six to eight to 10 pound test that will cast a great distance. P line, I absolutely love it. All of the gear here can be found at your local sportsman's warehouse. Get in, get geared up, and get in the outdoors. And three, two, here he comes. Boom, he's got it. Dude, nice spot. Eye on my ear too. Just fight the fish. <laughs> fight through the pain, Brad. Fight through the pain of the deer fly. Over the log. Yes, look at that. This is Brad's multitasking. He's got a beautiful brookie in the logs. He's got a deer fly eating his ear off. He's bleeding profusely. Look at this. Boom. That's a nice big one. That is a beautiful brook. Look at that. Holy cow. You kidding me? That's a gorgeous fish. Look at that. Awesome. All right. And he goes back in the logs. He's under. That's a nice release. Good job. You know, it is hard here. You were tossing these brooks back in because the problem is the bank goes to a certain point. Then you've got it drops off and it's three, four feet deep of marsh. It is difficult to get them, you know, just put them in. This is a good spot. You can do it. So you do need to try to be careful, but sometimes you just kind of got to flip them back in and they do just fine. This is cold oxygenated water and they just shoot right off. Here he comes. Oh, he's got it. Oh no, what? Over the logs, over the logs we go. Look at that. Hey, I love it. Look at this little brook. Got him out of that depression, came shooting out of the logs. Let's see if I can just calm him down. We'll get him back in the water. He's just got one right there in the beak. I smash these barbs down, look at that. Look at that good looking little fish. Gorgeous, it's so much fun casting. It's a little spooky because you're going into the logs. So most people go out past the logs, all these fish, they're shading under the logs and attacking from an ambush spot. So when you get to your high mountain pond like this and the UN is, a lot of people go to the open water and do catch some fish, but everything we're getting is coming out of the ambush spot in the logs. That's compliments of Daddy Bradley. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed pond number one. Man, some beautiful brookies. How about that casting along the logs are coming out and jacking it? You know what, we got up here in our Skyline Recreational ATV that we rented. What an awesome machine. They're right there in Sterling, Utah, so right below us off the mountain. Now, they've got everything you, you'll need for a rental, so give them a call. Weekends, you can rent all the machines for a week. They've got helmets, they've got it all. We're gonna pile in this machine. We're headed to pond number two. Get ready for some fast action. We're gonna ditch him and go by ourselves. What you see here is just a really small pond. We just hiked in from where we parked the machines. We're already seeing really nice brook trout in here. Now the thing about ponds like this is you're just gonna try to attack these deeper holes. It's got a lot of log lay down, so what we're pitching are jigs. You know, I've been throwing this really, really teeny, teeny micro Rapala. Um, I'll probably lose it here soon, but there's just fish all over in here. You just gotta pick them out and hit the deep spot. So we're gonna kinda go one at a time and just work. Each of us will take a cast or two, see if we can't put some big fish up on the shore. Oh, look at that dude, he just crushed. 
and I mean crushed. Look at how long that fish is. That is a good looking fish. I think that's the same one I caught the other day. Look how long he is. Look at the size of that head. That's a big, beautiful male. Little thin, but you know what? That's a holdover fish in a small pond like this. Let's get him back. But that is awesome. We're gonna just gently put him back. He is swimming under the mat. He came right out of the deep right there. That's all we're looking for is an impression like that. All right, Greg, you're up. So we've been up here fishing all day today. We kept a couple of these brook trout. And I just want to show you a fun way to do this. If you're going to come up here, you know what? Plan on and prepare to have a little shore lunch. So let me just tell you what I brought. I've got my little butane stove that I got at Sportsman's Warehouse. I've got a small skillet. I brought myself a little bit of cooking oil. I've already pre-seasoned all my flour, salt, pepper, everything I want in it. I've got a bag to mix my fish in. And our fillets are already filleted and washed in a bag. So all I'm going to simply do is combine my ingredients and uh, start flouring up and get, getting ready to cook. All right, so we've got our stove lit. I'm just going to pour in just a teeny bit of oil out of my pan. While we're doing that, while it's heating up, I just want to show you one other little component. You're always looking for a good side dish. Last night I cooked um, some minute rice. I seasoned it, flavored it. I put it in the refrigerator and I packed it away and I put everything including all my utensils. I packed them all up, they're ready to go in this really cool soft-sided travel bag from Sportsman's Warehouse. It's actually got cutting board, knife, everything I need in it. Zipped it shut, threw it in the back of the ATV, the UTV, and it's a great way to travel. So you can see I had everything minus the stove inside here so that I could have it all prepped and ready. And if you do all the prep work at home, you don't have to mess with, mess with it when you get up here. So I'm just gonna take these fillets, make sure they're coated. I'm going to go skin side down very first. Brook trout right out of the high mountains. While that's cooking, going, I'll take my next three fillets and I'm just going to drop them in the back with the flour so they can start coating up. Well, it took us about three minutes to cook our fillets. We've got them plated with some rice. And uh, before I share these with the guys, I'm gonna give it a little taste. What I love about it is it peels right off. Look at that, seasoned rice, salt and pepper, little lemon flour on there. Oh my gosh. Look at that guy, right? Right. Oh. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, that is cheating. I just stole Steve's fish, but he was a cruiser and he just absolutely went after my little baby Rapala. So we're just gonna pop that out a corner of his mouth. Look at that fish. How awesome. Oh, he's back in the water. Nice, Steve. Oh, beautiful. Oh, oh, he's got it, Steve. There you go. Bam, nice. Oh, that's awesome. That's like pitching to bass right there, Steve. That was beautiful. That just floated off the log. Take a look at this. Got really lucky that it sat on top of that log for a minute. Be able to just bring it in. That was incredible. Steve pitched his jig up on the log, slid it off. That brookie looked at it once, then as it dropped down, came up and grabbed it again. Look at that. Look how solid he yeah, is. Yeah, and that's actually a nice looking female. She's a little lighter colored. There we go. Big fish, this is, this is a really good fish. This could be one of our better fish of the day. Look at this fish right here. Ho, ho, ho. Look at this guy. Oh, he's got himself kind of hooked on the grass. Oh, look at that. Right in the beak. Look at that gorgeous fish right there. Got him right in the mouth. Okay, take a look at that. That's so awesome right there. These, these ponds just have some nice little deep spots in them. And all we're doing is just throwing our, our small stuff in there. Look at that fish go. Is that not awesome? It's just looking like a small bait fish. And you know, in a pond like this, it's probably a little helgamite. It's, you know, some small little something, maybe even a little, you know, early spawn. There we go. 
fish, but sometimes going micro is gonna produce some of your best fish. And that's why Brad's uh, pitching these jigs. They look like a leech. And this little pattern right here looks just like a little teeny fish or a pollywog or something that's swimming through the water. We'll just unbutton this guy. Look at that right there. Look at that fish. How gorgeous. We're just gonna set him back and he's gone. Oh, I love it, I love it. It's a good cast. No, he's on it. You got it, you got him, you got him. Yes! Oh, nice fish, Greg. Nice fish. Look at that. Wow. Oh, and he pulled. That's a beautiful fish, Greg. That was big. boy. That was big. That was a great fish. Greg cast up there, his jig hits the moss. That thing came up out of the bottom, swam right up to the top, took him, and uh, just right off the dark edge of the log. This is visually so much fun because you can see the brooks in this crystal clear water, and they're just coming up and taking our jigs, taking our little mini Rapalas. What a blast.